time we saw some of these drivers was down at the South Buxton Raceway last Saturday night. A good contingent of our Friday night racers headed down the highway to the South Buxton Raceway, including in this heat race, Jamie Collard, Keith Dempster, and Travis Cunningham, among others. Travis Cunningham got the third place in the feature last Saturday at South Buxton. And here we go, heat race number one for the sprint cars set to go. Green flag, come out of the corner four, Chris Duran and Jim Hoopinen will get on it, down into corner one, they go side by side. Hoopinen takes the lead in the 14 car. Been a rough season a little bit for the 14 so far. He's trying to make up the lost crowd now. Here comes Todd Hoddick trying to take away that third spot from Travis Cunningham. Yeah, Todd Hoddick on the outside groove of the 71 of Travis Cunningham. They try to split by Chris Duran coming off of four. Hoddick thought better of that one. Drops back. He's going to try the bottom side now in turns one and two. Duran, though, strong on the top side, holds on to the third spot for now. Jim Hoopinen picking up where he left off last time in his own ride as he won the feature. Unfortunately, didn't pass post-race inspection, but he won it. And now he's back in his own car, leading the way here at Angler Machine and Tool. He raced one. And the important thing for Hoopinen is he's got his primary engine back in that car. That's what he was waiting on the last couple of weeks. And strong so far out front is the 14 8 Jamie Collar trying to work his way through the field. He is up to fourth right now after starting seven. Of course, passing points are on the line. They are important. And Jamie Collar sets his sights now on Todd Hoddick, although he does have a damaged nose wing on the center. Yeah, Collar's nose wing has fallen down, and that's going to make for a bit of a push on the front end of the 7X. Open it now, gets the two to go signal in the 14H, but here comes Cunningham on the bottom. Cunningham right there, lap traffic, Mike Farrell may play a factor in this one in. Hoopinen will dive down to the inside, here comes Cunningham with them as they come down the white flag. Hoopinen opens up the middle the gap again now, Dempster trying to challenge the 7X of Jamie Collard, but he's going to have to get around that lap car of Mike Farrell first. Down off of corner number four, checkered flags out, and Jim Hoopinen will win Engler Machine and Tool Heat Race number one. Travis Cunningham second, Todd Hoddick third, Jamie Collard fourth, fifth will be Keith Dempster, sixth will go to Chris Duran, seventh Connor Mahoney, and eighth will be Mike Farrell. So there's your winner of Engler Machine and Tool Heat Race number one out of Fenwick, Ontario, in the Hurtner Estate Wines, car number 40, 14H. It's Jim Hoopinen. Jim Hoopinen, the winner. Night it gets on the gas and we are on it. Green is out. The top three streak away ahead of Rand and Burbridge. To the outside of two is your leader, Dane Nida, Greg. Jamie Turner tried to go high on Dave Dykstra. That didn't work. He got pinched out of the way. And now here comes Dykstra challenging for the lead. It's all Dane Nida around the outside, though, as he stakes it up for the top. Here comes Dykstra. Power move to the bottom. Has to get out of it to avoid slamming into the side of the Dane Nida 07. Nida pulls away over that advantage now. No grip at all right now in that bottom groove. They can get down in there fast, but coming off the corner, there's no bite at all. Danny Knight out of Tecumseh, Michigan, currently leads here in Drysdale Racing Products, heat race number two. Danny Knight, guy we haven't really talked a lot about this year. Having a decent run for that town line variety. Hill Styers combination, looking good out front as the standout out of Michigan usually does. Dykstra, the former champ of the division two years ago. Had not the best of seasons last year, looking to improve now. Turner came out of the house looking pretty good in the 11 car. Way down to the five, last complete, three to go with your leader, Dane Nida, out in front. Second is Dave Dykstra in the 5D. Then the battle for third is Jamie Turner in the 11th. Fourth is Tyler Rand. Fifth is Mitch Brown in the 10th. And it's John Burbridge Sr., Zach Zumpy, 
And the 40 car, Sammy Stice, rounding up the field with two to go. Dane Nida coming up to the back end of the Stice 40 car as you put him down a lot before this one comes to completion. Turner back there at 30. Scott Tyler Rand trying to dig the bottom on him. Not close enough. Nida trying to find his way around to the white flag. Dave Dykstra is reeled in a little bit closer here. A lot of traffic was going to play a factor. It does for Dave Dykstra, and he will put uh, distance down between he and the leaders. They collide down at corner number three, and the nose wing pops off the 40 of Sammy Stice. Trouble for Dykstra when those cars hop up like that. Good thing he can still drive it back around, Greg, or that could have been nasty. That was shaping up to be a rollover for both cars, and lucky that neither went over. The 40 of Sammy Stice, as you can see, has nose damage. And from the look of it, it looks like Dave Dykstra's car is no worse for the wear. Yeah, the, the only thing, Greg, that I see bent up on the Dykstra number 5D is the rear nerf bar is bent up just a bit. That's the only thing I can see from my vantage point, though. And from this side, the uh, right side nerf bar is bent up just a little bit. But like you say, the back end where the majority of the damage is. Well, Dykstra thought he'd make a pass on the outside of the 40 car going into two. 40 of Stice slips up in front of him. Dykstra takes another shot at it, dives to the bottom going to three just as the rookie goes to the bottom and they tag. We've got three great classes on the card tomorrow. The 358 Dirt Car Modifieds, which always put on a great show. The Sprint Cars and the Hoosier Stocks, which is basically our Thunder Stocks here. And an Enduro, Dollar Hot Dog Nights. So that's all at Merrittville Speedway tomorrow night. Hopefully we'll see you all down there. As we get set to roll, I'm sure Dykstra and Turner, those guys cut their teeth along with Zumpy at Merrittville. They'll be looking to get a big win tomorrow night. You can bet on it. Dane Nida coming around out of turn four. He'll get set to roll here, and he gets away from Dykstra on the green. One lap to wrap this one up, Greg. Green and white. This is the chance that Dykstra wanted to try and redeem himself after that last lap, but it won't work. It looks like the driver to Tecumseh, Michigan, is going to come and take a checkered flag. Drysdale Racing Products Heat 2, Dane Knight is your winner. Dave Dykstra second, Mitch Brown third, Jamie Turner fourth, fifth is Tyler Ram, and it's Zach Sumpy and John Burbridge Jr. Who's in the 31 tonight, John Burbridge Jr. will round out that qualifying heat. So your winner of Drysdale Racing Products Heat race number two out of Tecumseh, Michigan, it's Dane Knight, Dane Knight in the 07 x Tires takes the lead out front in the zero. Ross goes for a bit of a ride up in turn one. He gets the three R righted, and we stay green flag racing. Here comes Chris Steele trying to take the second spot away from Mikey Kretschko. Yeah, my correction, 21J is in this field, and that is our seven car lineup, but he went to the tail was the problem there, and it had jumbled the lineup. With Glenn Styers, your leader, the current point leader for the back merchandising first. Tom Hooper has made up a couple spots already. Could be important in the passing points later on. Here he comes trying to get around the 0-1 of Kruska, but the yellow is now out for the 3R of Shane Ross, who's gone for a ride up in turn four. So these drivers will remain single file path until they get past the Ontario Global.com restart cone on the front stretch. Lynn Steyer's your leader, the real deal, Chris Steele, right there in second as we get back on it and underway. Steele in the car got his first ever sprint car feature win a couple weeks back, and he tried to get the lead there from Glenn Steyer's. That didn't work, and he falls back. Tom Hoopinen now is going to try to get up into the fray in the 27-8. Coming across the stripe, Steyer's leads again. Steele second, Tom Hoopinen has come a long way through this. 
Into the third spot, Mikey Kretzka, the bull sitter, dropping back now to fifth as Derek Jonathan to the inside of him. Myers gets the halfway signal, four in, four to go, as Steele and Hoopinen fight over that second spot. Derek Jonathan and Mikey Kretzka now start to fight, fight over that fourth spot. Glenn Steyers has been on a rail all year. It started off in the King of the 360s at East Bay Raceway when he won that one. He got a win on opening night here, and now he's powering to the lead. Now with just two laps to go here in this qualifying heat, looking strong in the zero. Tom Hoopin and Chris Steele have not got that second spot sorted out yet. Hoopin keeps trying to make gains on the bottom side, but there's just no grip down there in turn two, and he loses time. One more trip around for the Oshweekan Flyers. He cruises down the back stretch through corner three. And I'm off of corner four. Your winner here in this O'Neill's Farm Equipment Heat Race number three is Glenn Styers. Chris Steele is second. Third will be Tom Hoopinen. Fourth will go to Mikey Kretschka. Fifth is Derek Jonathan. Sixth is Shane Ross. And seventh will go to John Burbridge Sr. So there's your winner of O'Neill Farm Equipment Case International. Heat race number three, the Oshweekan Flyer, Glenn Styers. The point leader. He's on the point. Gets the win here in this qualifying heat. And one more qualifier still to come out. That's brought to you by Best Western Care Crop Hotel in Niagara Falls, Ontario. Third minus the 98 of the opponent who does have to go to the tail. So Steve Goldner and Jim Porter make up the front row once again. James Kiwi Evans and Michael Perrant, row number two. Shane Butler and Jesse Costa, row number three. And Kokoda at the back. Keep an eye on that 25 of Perrant. He got a good jump on the last start. Clip. Yeah, he really tried to butter up the sides and skim in there. Backed out of it the last second as things got a bit squirrely up front. Goldner and Porter again on it. Oh, sorry, Goldner on the inside. And they get going out. Look at Perrant. This time he'll try the outside, Tommy. Perrant almost ran out of room there, and now he does. He almost gets up into the wall. Falls back, and here comes Jesse Costa in the 52, Jim Porter, starting to open a lead now. Michael Perron got a fast car, just can't seem to find anywhere to pass the 30 of Golder. He tried up high last lap, he'll try down low now. Can't do it, they get back to three, and once again, Perron trying to get underneath Stephen Golder. Perron, one of the traveling drivers from the Quebec area, and he's finding out that the local drivers here in Ontario are pretty tough to beat sometimes as Jim Porter, the New Yorker, is streaking away out front in the F-37. Mikel Perron holding on to second, Stephen Goldner third. Costa to fourth as they all look for different lines back there to try and catch the leaders. All Jim Porter still smoking out of that F-37 again. Porter, one of the few guys so far who's been making a good line around the bottom side of the speedway, but Perron has a faster line on the top side and he's made up lots of ground here now. And I think he's gonna get side by side and now contact on the back straightaway. Goldner upside down, Costa and McConan also involved. McConan just spins to avoid. Steven Goldner on his lid here on the back straightaway. Safety crew already on the scene. Costa and McConan appear to be all right. Gloves coming off inside the Goldner 30, so that's a good sign as he works to get out of the car. Jesse Costa, two weeks in a row with trouble for the 52. And now they're gonna put Goldner back on his wheels here as he sits strapped in the 30G. Rear end all tore up, left rear gone up the 30G here of Goldner, top wing all bent up as well. We look at Jesse Costa's 52, the right front all tore up on it, and he's got front end damage again this week on the 52. They'll have to get that repaired and get ready for the B main. How about a folks, Steven Golder out of this 30G on the back straightaway under his own power, walking away. We have a few more winners for the Junior Fan Club. Again, JT Pedley has won a McDonald's gift card, along with Zachary Roswell. Jacob Dykstra, Jasmine Silversmith. So it's uh, Zachary Roswell, 
Jacob Dykstra, Jasmine Silversmith, and JT Pedley have all won McDonald's gift cards. Please. Girls still going through the stands, selling what's left of the program. So if you want to get one, $2 a copy, a chance to win some prizes at intermission. They've got a few left. Grab a copy before they're all gone. They've been selling out quickly. Four laps in, four to go here in this final qualifier. Brought to you by Best Western Karen Croft. Back to the call of the race, Clinton Jeffrey, Tommy Goose. Thanks a lot, Greg. Here they come out of turn four. Jim Porter, Mikhail Perron. Drop the gas and it will be... Porter leading him into one. Perrault has been fast, looking for room around the outside. Seven cars are down to four now. So some of these guys are going to get some extra passing points if they can finish this race. Michael Perrault now gets the lead momentarily. Porter now slips in turn two and Perrault takes off. Perrault has been by far the quickest car in this qualifying race. He will swing it around with two laps to go. Porter can only just watch him drive away. Porter married to that bottom side in the F37 and that's not the fast way around right now as Perrant is showing out front running the cushion in the 25. Last time through for Perrant in one and two. He gets on the back straight away and streaks away further from the Porter. F37 brings it around to the outside. First appearance of 2012 for Perrant. He'll grab a qualifying race win. Porter will come across in second, followed by Evans and Pacone in the last four cars remaining in this qualifying race, number four. Don't forget if you have a happy birthday announcement tonight at the base of the stairs. When he got on the gas, everybody else drove away. We'll watch if there's problems on the old one this time. Derek, Jonathan, and Shane Ross are on the front row. Now Zumpy and Kretschka find themselves in the heat positions here. They gotta keep it going. Make sure nobody gets around them to stay in the A feature tonight. This time, Jonathan didn't get much of a start off the pole position, but it looks like we are going to take that start. And Shane Ross, the rookie in the 3R, streaking away out front. Jonathan second. Shane Ross, your leader. Derek Jonathan running second. Zumpy trying to get underneath the crutch goal. One for third. Behind them, Dempster on the move in the five car. Ross in that former Dustin Dagen machine running around the top side on a slightly rough and heavy cushion, which is exactly where that car used to like to run with Daggett behind the wheel. But Derek Jonathan keeping pace right with him, side by side for the third spot is Zumpy and Kretschka. Dempster trying to get up in there. Ross taking a right turn as he got to turn three to take a shot to the outside. And there he goes again, pointing right up to the cushion. That's where he was the first time he came here to the Speedway for testing two nights. But the track was much like it is tonight. He had to hammer down right from his very first lap in the sprint car. Derek Jonathan trying to chase down Shane Ross. Getting a little bit closer each lap. They'll be on the lap car before too much longer. Five in, five to go. So Gretzka and Dempster holding down the transfer spots. Now Zumpy has fallen back. A little bit of handling issues on the 11Z as the left front tire bouncing up and down on that machine. Shane Ross in the lap traffic along with Derek Jonathan. Kretschka and Dempster battle for third and fourth. They gotta be careful, they're both transfer spots right now. Don't wanna get into trouble. Shane Ross putting a lap now on Sammy Stice and Mike Farrell. Derek Jonathan has dropped back from that lead position now. Still holding down the second spot as the driver of the green 81. Yeah, Jonathan possibly falling back into the clutch of the Kretschka, but it's such a huge margin, it won't be an issue unless Jonathan has a big problem. Shane Ross looking fantastic in the B main tonight, ahead of Derek Jonathan. White flag out, one more lap to go. Track now widening out quite a bit as the sprint car is really pounding on that cushion. Most of them on the top side, including Ross, the leader who comes through turn three and four the final time. Shane Ross gets the B-Main win. Derek Jonathan.
second, Mikey Kretschka third, Keith Dempster the fourth and final transfer position. Cars in the B main, the 3R of Shane Ross, the 81 of Derek Jonathan, 01 Mikey Kutchka, and the 5 of Keith Dempster. Those four will take the back end of our 20 lap Corcock merchandising sprint cars. Dykstra and Steele, first and third, go to the bottom. Styers on the outside, takes second as he streaks toward the top side of turn number one. Styers in that second spot. Chris Steele back in third. The leader, though, gets a little woed up off a of corner two. That allows Glenn Styers to close the ground. Dykstra with the lead. Styers as he comes down on it. Sorry, Tommy, and you take it here. But look at Steele. He goes to the top now, Tommy. Steele trying that top side as he sees everybody else making some hay up there. And Dykstra takes the low side now in turn four. These guys searching for grip all over the place. Top five of all strung out. Best battles for seventh and eighth. It's Cunningham and Tommy Hooping it. Cunningham almost over the rooster tail bird in turn two. Battle for the lead up front. Dave Dykstra and Glenn Sires go at it. Yellow is out for James Evans up in corner number two. He loops it around the entrance of the pit area. James Evans went for a big slide there and finally just could not save it. I believe just made slight contact there with the tail end of the number. Not Travis Cunningham in the 71. Eight is Tom Hoopin in the Gal Perron. Moffitt in the F37. We mentioned it was Jim Porter early tonight, but it has been Kyle Moffitt in the F37 all night. White flag is out, single file. Pass the OntarioLoval.com restart code with Dave Dykstra, your leader. One and look at the run he got down the back stretch that time Quinn. Glenn Styers up on the cushion in three and four. Steeler right in his tire tracks. Booping it in fourth. First car on the bottom behind the leader, Dave Dykstra. The man on the move, Jamie Collard, working his way now by Mitch Brown into the top five. Meanwhile, the battle up front heating up between Styers and Dykstra. Dykstra fends off that challenge on the low side from Dykstra. Now Chris Steele, he's starting to get up back into that fight as well in the number 80 car. Styers a little bit loose. He gathers it up. Now Steele taking a shot at the inside of the Styer zero, and we got yellow. Not sure what that's for. Tyler Rand is slow down the back straightaway. But the 07 XD Nida is parked up against the wall. Not too far away from where James Evans was just a few laps ago as we see another car go off the edge of the track up here. In contrast to that, Dave Nida will pull up get the car back in gear and get a push to refire. So that's a good run. If you can get it straight about the midway of the corner and come straight out of there with a good trajectory, you can really make up some wheel speed. Going back to you, Greg, as we get set to go green again. Ready to come to life. Single file down the back stretch with Dave Dykstra leading over Glenn Styers, Chris Steele, Jim Hoopinen, and Jamie Collard. Dale Shenneman with a green flag in hand, and we'll go back at it with five and 15 to go. Dykstra gets on the hammer out front once again as he wants to get his first win of the season. Now contact between Chris Steele and Glenn Steyer. Steyer's around and into the lead. Steele hot, chews it to the outside. Dykstra trying to gather back up. It's him and Steele will cross lanes. Look at Dykstra come to the bottom, Tommy. Wow, Tommy Hoopin and kissed the outside wall just enough to leave a little puff of smoke. No damage on the 27H, a slick move off of four. Guys, we need to keep an eye on the 7X from Jamie Collard. And now, as I say that, he loses power. The 7X slow 
in turn one, I don't think he's going to get off the track. No, yellow will come out here for the 7X of Jamie Collard as he comes up limp on the top side of turn one. And the F37 of Kyle Moffat had pit side as well. Collard lost power coming off a of corner four, and then it's like it jumped into gear all of a sudden. He had power for a second, and then it just died going down into corner one. Is the mulligan. There is no mulligan this year. We're not going to take the, the lowest point total for every driver for one night this year and throw them away. So if you have a bad night, you could be in trouble this year. Still lots of season to make up ground, but uh, it's going to be a long way back now for some of these guys who have trouble this year. Consistency is always key to a DNF, not what the caller team was looking for. Meanwhile, his quasi teammate, Glenn Styers, leads the way. Chris Steele, Dave Dykstra on his tail. Styers and Steele get on it out of two. Down the back shoot, it's Glenn Styers with the lead. Dykstra fading back as Hoopinen. Both Hoopinens now trying it underneath the Dykstra 5. Yeah, Tom and Jim Hoopinen both scoot by the 5D of Dave Dykstra. And the outside pole sitter beginning to fade in this one with Glenn Styers, your leader. Styers pulling away over Chris Steele and Tom Hoopinen. Jim Hoopinen with Travis Cunningham running the bottom in the 71. Tom Hoopinen making up some ground now in that 27 8 We have trouble, big trouble in turn four. Three cars get together. Kyle Moffitt, James Evans, and Dane Nida all involved there. Nida had the 07X back running again, but. Dane Nida came off of corner four and did a donut, tried to keep in the throttle, and just as he got it, he left no room for Kyle Moffitt and James Evans, who took a hard hit on the front stretch wall. We have security down there, so if you just stay in your seats, not go near the craft seats. They'll check on James Evans, of course. Uh, he had a rough ride a couple of years back. You can buy advanced reserve seating for that as well. White flag is it. We'll go back to green flag racing next time around. Looks like Jamie Collard has the problem fixed, but unfortunately, two laps down. You know, Greg, if you look at the right front on Jamie Collard, tons of mud caked in that right front. And that could be giving him some fits as well, as it's certainly not going to handle the way he wants to. Back to you, Greg, for the start of this one. Single file past the cone on the front stretch, and we'll get back to it. Nine in, 11 to go. Glenn Steyer goes past that restart cone, and we're back underway. Here comes Chris Steele making a bid on the bottom side, not able to do anything that time. He slides up high in turn two. Here comes Tom Hooper. Glenn Steyer, still your leader, Steele to the outside. Tom Hooper working on the bottom. Trying to find some room to get up to the 80. Dykstra pounds the turn one cushion hard. The leader, Glenn Steyers, has about a 10 car length advantage over Chris Steele. Tom Hoopin in third, Dave Dykstra fourth. And Jim Hoopin in rounding up the top five to pass the halfway mark. Steyers continues to open up his lead. Chris Steele falling back as is Tom Hoopin in the good fight is on for the fourth spot between Dave Dykstra and Jim Hoopin in. Those two going at it side by side for a couple of laps now. Behind them, Dykstra and Jim Hoopinen. It's Travis Cunningham right up to the back straightaway wall. Mike Belperon trying to make a run on him as they come to the inside of three and four. We are leader in maybe a couple of laps here. We'll reach some lap traffic in the real deal. Chris Steele really the only driver within striking distance. The good ways back to Tom Hoopinen in third, Jim Hoopinen in fourth, fifth is Dave Dykstra, sixth Travis Cunningham, seventh Michael Perron, eighth Mitch Brown, ninth Keith Benser, and it's Todd Hoddick rounding out the top ten. Glenn Steyers now has Mikey Kretzka in his sights, so he'll try to put him a lot down in just a moment, and then a bunch of cars racing side by side in front of him, and Steyers is going to have to get her out. Chris Steele way off of turn one. That will give second to the Hoopinens as Tommy has it, Jim wants it, and the Steeler will drop back two spots. At the line, the battle for second heating up. Meanwhile, Glenn Steyer's mired in traffic. He gets by Mikey Kretschka, but didn't get the run he wanted past Shane Ross. Steyer's now trying to get up and get around some more last turn. He's got a full away advantage in that place for the second spot. Between the 
hoping it, brothers. Jim, the 2011 track champion, Tom, and the 2017-2009 track champion. Now Dykstra again, same thing that happens to Steele. Off the end of two and loses a couple positions. And that's not going to work for him as he will drop a few right off the leaderboard. Great run for Jim Hoopinen who finally gets his primary motor back. He's looking for redemption after his last outing. He had won but didn't make it past post-race inspection. Meanwhile, Glenn Styers cruising out front with a half a lap to go. Tires way out front, a little bit sideways there in our turn two, but he's got a big lead, and he will bring the fourth home. Glenn Styers wins it. Second will be Jim Hoopinen. Tom Hoopinen comes across in third. Fourth will be Chris Steele. Fifth, Travis Cunningham. He's out of the car for the second time this year. The winner, Glenn Styers. There's the hard work, Glenn. You're finally back on top. You had a rough season in 2011. Everything is going right. You're leading the points. Second win of the year. What more can you say? Well, my brother won the Rochester uh, World Finals in uh, lacrosse. Our season has turned around, and I want to say I busted my wrist, didn't win a single race last year. I appreciate what I do now. I don't take it for granted. Is Tina going to bust the other wrist to get you the championship? <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Now, uh, it's been a great uh, season here at the track on the other side of the fence. I know as the owner, you've got your eye on the car, but also on the other side of the fence. How hard is it as a driver to compete but still be worried about what's going on? Well, you know what? We're really concerned about the fans. We want to make it enjoyable and you, I want these guys to brag about a Schwiegen Speedway so we're doing everything that we can to make it the best experience for you for the value of the money and uh, you know I hope you tell all your friends and bring everybody back because you know all the guys in the pits get to do what they love to do and with all of the sponsors coming on board with all you guys and the fans it really helps us do what we want to do and fulfill our dream and I'm hoping uh, you like the dream too. Back behind the wheel of the car Looking back to last year and the struggles he had looking to this year, have there been any major changes or is it just a fresh slate got things going? Well, after we won that big race in Florida, it just seemed to give me a lot more confidence. Um, Steve knows how to set these cars up and, uh, you know, I got a great team owner uh, and partner, Miles Hill and my brother, Kurt. Uh, without them guys, we wouldn't be able to do what we do at this level. And, uh, you know, I got to thank them guys and all of the crews that come. I mean, every week, I mean, it takes hours and hours to get these cars in tip-top shape, and it takes a lot of work, and all you guys see is the, the, the finished results, but there's a lot of behind-the-scene work, and uh, like I said, all these young kids out there, dreams come true, never give up. There you go, let's hear it for the Oshwegan Flyer, Glenn Styers, as he celebrates down here in Engine Pro Racing Winner's Circle. Well, fans, I'm just curious what you guys thought. Spring cars earlier in the night, did you like that tonight? 